My name is Dr. John DeYard, and welcome to LifeSpot.com, where we prove ancient medical wisdom with modern science. And today, I want to talk about something really amazing, that in Ayurvedic medicine, thousands of years ago, they discussed in quite detail the whole microbiome. They understood that there were actually little bacteria, they called CRIMI, C-K-R-I-M-I, and they discussed in detail what these little either visible or invisible microbes would do. We now know that there are certain um, little bacteria that are visible and some of them are absolutely invisible. Um, they discussed that they were found in places like water, uh, milk, which we know has lots of bacteria in it, uh, butter, uh, soil, which is where all the bugs come from, on our body, on utensils, um, and they were um, there definitely, we got exposed to them when we were in contact with animals. So this was written 3,500 years ago in the Rig Veda, and then later on about 1,500 years ago in one of the ancient Ayurvedic texts, uh, Charaka Samhita. So it's sort of amazing to me that here, once again, they knew that there were this subtle uh, microscopic invisible influence on us, and it was really, really important. In fact, what they, just, what they designed, which I thought was so prophetic, was a lifestyle. And as I've been over the years looking and understanding more about the Ayurvedic lifestyle and also studying the microbiome and keeping up with what's being discovered, it's really clear that the microbiome, our good bugs, are very sensitive to its environment. They're sensitive to being next to a stressed out person or a social disruptor or stress or emotional stress. They like a peaceful environment, one that you would think if you were living off the land thousands of years ago, that it was peaceful. You know, there wasn't a lot going on. There wasn't a lot of hustle and bustle. It was, in, it was living in sync and in harmony with the rhythms of nature, which we now call circadian medicine, which is now you know, Nobel Prize winning science, which is something that traditional cultures just did because that's what they had to do to stay alive, was to live in sync and in harmony with these rhythms. Ayurveda took it one step further and said that we should live a sattvic lifestyle. A sattvic life is a giving, loving, peaceful, kind, joyful, caring for others type lifestyle. And I've talked about this in a lot of my articles and videos you can get for free online. Look in the emotional health section for lots more on that and the Ayurvedic psychology part of my website. But the idea that, that, these, these, uh, that this ancient understanding of a lifestyle that was peaceful and calm, <clears throat> excuse me, is now backed by science, which suggests that if we live a, a healthy lifestyle, a balanced lifestyle, that our good bugs proliferate in a more positive way. So here we have this ancient wisdom um, that understood that these microbes were powerfully affecting us. They talked about these microbes that were inside of us uh, internally, they talked about microbes that were on our body, on our skin, and they talked about the ones that are in our mouth and our dental bacteria. So they discussed all these, had terms for these. So it was really, I just thought, you know, quite amazing. They also just described them as both pathogenic or non-pathogenic, which means they are harmful or they're not harmful, harmful, which I thought was an interesting way that they described it because in our culture, we have good bugs and bad bugs, right? Well, the more you, we learn about these bugs, there really is no such thing as a good bug or a bad bug. The same bug that's good for me could be bad for you. It's really clear um, that they now know that. These bugs are clearly out for themselves. They're not here to help us. They're here to help them. And we seem to help provide something for them. And therefore, the symbiotic relationship seems to work. But there is no one good bug and one bad bug. It just seems to be they could be really good for in one situation and really, really bad in another. And this is the newest understanding of the bugs. So they didn't kind of classify them as good or bad, and there's just really good bugs you want to get more of. They said, create a lifestyle that was actually more harmonious and more beneficial, and let the good bugs sort of outperform the bad bugs, which I think is just brilliant. In fact, they had three ways of getting rid of the bugs when they caused an infection or caused a problem. They also said, that hygiene was a really big deal. This is 3,500 years ago. They talked about hygiene being a very critical piece of maintaining 
and how keeping these bugs, these crimi in balance, which I thought, again, was just sort of phenomenal. But they said there's, you know, three ways to get rid of them. One, physically remove them, and they're probably more for the visible ones, things like that. Um, and there were like ticks, and some of them are really microscopic, and some of them you can actually see, but they're really small. Uh, lice and things like that you are very, very small, but you can still see them. Um, so physically removing them was one way to do it. You could eliminate the cause of the infection, like find out how you got infected, if, you're, if it's the animal thing or hygiene or what's in your water, it's in your food, on your utensils. They talked about making sure that that didn't happen. And then the final way, which I thought was so prophetic, you know, again, the idea that ancient wisdom and modern science uh, are, were, are, 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 are what we talk about here at LifeSpot.com. They said modify the prakriti, which is the body type, the, the nature of the individual. Modify that. Modify the habitat of the crimi, the parasites or the microbes, the bacteria themselves. So alter their environment so they don't become a problem. And then even more prophetic, they said alter the host of the individual, both externally and internally, which means make sure your gut lining is healthy and beneficial and also externally the same thing. So techniques were, were literally you know, employed thousands of years ago. They made no sense back then and for only recently did they make sense at all modern science wise. Putting oil on your skin will change the habitat. And we now know that the bugs on your skin love oil, that's what they eat. Putting oil in your mouth and swishing for 10 to 15 minutes actually activates all types of benefits that change and alter the microbiology of the mouth. Um, putting ghee inside your, your, on your, in your food, taking butter and boiling it down and making, you know, boiling up all the milk solids and making ghee. Like, how do they think of that? And now we know that ghee is the highest source of butyric acid and butyric acid on the planet. And butyric acid is the number one uh, fatty acid that the gut bugs eat and live on. And our immunity, our gut immunity, which is 80% of our immune strength overall, is supported by one fatty acid, which is called butyric acid. And we have bugs in our gut that literally manufacture butyric acid, Castridium butyricum, for example. But when you eat ghee, you get a, you get a, you know, a dietary dose of that, again, to support those microbes. So, so much of what Ayurveda was doing was all about making sure these bugs are really critically important. We know that they out, they out you know, number us in, in large quantities. And if we screw up and try to kill them, they come back with a lot of bad guys that take us out, which is not good either. So the idea that they knew about this, I just think is sort of quite fascinating and how they suggested to alter the environment, our environment with a sattvic way of living, peaceful, kind, joyful, oxytocin building, telomere lengthening uh, you know, effects happen when you're peaceful and loving and kind and meditate and sort of pull back the bow and establish that inner calm and function from that inner place of peace and calm, be it from prayer or meditation or deep rest, or we talk, we've written about uh, forest bathing where they go into the woods and get the benefits of being in, in one with nature, it has powerful therapeutic effects. Maybe it sort of upregulates all those genes that we had that, that we had for so many millions of years that suggested that uh, that allowed us to 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 ad ad adapt genetically to a very you know you know uh, peaceful calm still environment which you would see in the wilderness or the wild. So I just think it's fascinating. I thought I would bring that information to you. I've read a pretty comprehensive article about that with all this research you can read about that, but how they knew so much about that. And then of course at lifespot.com I. I'm a big fan of not taking probiotics for the rest of your life. I mean, you know, this is a new, brand new concept that we do that. What about doing what they said thousands of years ago? Reset the prakriti of us, bring our body into balance, create a, a better environment for the, for the good guys to proliferate and not such a good environment for the bad guys to proliferate. And that's what I create. And I have an article you guys can go to, it's the four step kind of reset your microbiome plan. And I do that with by laying down a, a natural prebiotic slime, which is a combination of slippery elm, marshmallow and licorice root. We boil that, that, those rough herbs down from two quarts to a half a quart. And you take tablespoon dosage of this prebiotic soluble fiber slime, coating your whole intestinal tract, creating an environment to heal and repair your our broken down intestinal barrier. 
but also create an environment for the good bugs that want to proliferate to be there. Um, and that's sort of step one. We also add well, along with that a formula called gut revival, which has probiotics that are very antagonistic to some of the bad or spectator or not active bugs in your gut. But the other half of that product is uh, colonizing probiotics that actually stick and adhere to your intestinal wall. It's a big deal between colonizing probiotics and, and transient probiotics. You take transient probiotics, they work and they're great, but you do have to keep taking them. And they don't really have a big impact on your, your microbiome. Matter of fact, I just got my microbiome test. I was taking and testing a probiotic um, that was a transient probiotic and, and they, the report came back. There was no, uh, no uh, noticeable amount of any oral supplemental probiotic in my gut. And I've been taking this for about six weeks, pretty heavy dosages. So again, what does that mean? Maybe no one really knows yet, but it clearly wasn't colonizing me with new diverse bugs that, that were on the label because that didn't show up in my test. So the point being, and what I'm a big believer is get on, heal the intestinal skin, lay, get rid of some of the not active bad guys that aren't there, repopulate with some colon, permanent colonizers, and then see if we can create an environment with better digestion, a sophic lifestyle, pull it all together the best we can and see if we can't reboot a healthy microbiome. Our, our, then we usually finish that up with a product called Flora Restore, which is just the colonizers that has been you know, pretty, pretty powerful. In fact, we had a, a group of uh, folks a couple of years ago um, go to Europe and we had half the group take a probiotic, the Flora Restore, the colonizers, and the other half didn't take the, the probiotic. And we measured their, pro their gut microbiome before they left and about three weeks after when they came back. And when they came back, uh, we tested their bugs. The group that took the probiotic, the, the Flora Restore, the colonizers, had 40 to about 50% more diverse bugs in their gut than the people who didn't take the probiotic. All of them were exposed to new bugs in Europe and traveling around, but they only, but only, uh, but the ones who took the probiotic had significantly more uh, permanent resonance, microbial diversity, which is the, the real key, it seems, right, to our health and longevity is to have an environment that supports many, many diverse bugs. Again, that's why we eat seasonal food, right? And that study was that I did was just sort of mimic the study that I had read when I got these colonizers and I want to see if I could replicate it. And they found 60% increased microbial diversity. I found 40 to 50%, something like that. Pretty powerful that that's exactly what's happening. But I think if you, if you stack your deck by creating an environment for those guys to stick around, you're going to be even better off. Stack your deck again by eating seasonal food. And we also, as you know, publish a free a uh, grocery list and a recipe list and a superfood list for free for every month of the year. You get that in your inbox for free. It's called the Three Season Diet Challenge. Get it on my website on the homepage at lifespa.com and get all the information, what flowers are in bloom and, and edible throughout the summer months. You know, what are recipes for each of the months of the summer and the winter and the fall. It's a year, the year I think we're doing it for years now. Super popular just to get us re-educated to getting the food that has the bugs from the soil on our plate, in our mouth, in our gut, and change our microbiome. And then of course, finally, the attitude, becoming more sattvic, giving, loving, caring for others changes our microbiome, and there's really good science behind that. You're stressed out, going, going, 91 hours, push, 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 that changes our, our microbiome in a negative way. So those are the things that Ayurveda talked about. It's not that many things, really. It's just a couple of things change your environment, reboot your digestion, eat seasonal food, be loving and kind, and off you go. Hey, read this article. I think it's so prophetic that they, under that they understood the microbiome maybe more than we, we understand it today even, because we're still really just beginning to understand it. And they talked in some pretty interesting detail uh, and they are finding, uh, we're finding that what they knew was actually, you know, pretty much right on, right on track. Okay, thanks for listening. See you next time. I'm Dr. John Duyard.